All right, UFC 203 is coming up. It's going to be on September 10th at the Quicken's Lawn Arena in Cleveland, Ohio. We are finally getting CM Punk's long-awaited UFC debut, but that is going to be overshadowed by the main event of the evening, and that is for the UFC Heavyweight Championship, and that's Stipe Miocic looking to defend his championship for the first time against Alistair Overeem. Now, Stipe just recently won his championship against Fabrício Overdoom. He went down to Brazil and fought Fabrício in Fabrício's backyard and knocked out Fabrício in the first round. I mean, knocked him out cold, too. We all know how the Brazilian fans can get, too, so, man, there just had to been so much pressure going on Stipe in that fight, and he proved all doubters wrong. Not a lot of people picked him to win that fight, and he brought the belt back to America, and the UFC is actually letting him try to defend his title for the first time in his backyard in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, Stipe, he's a big, tough, young, athletic guy. He's got long reach. He was a Golden Gloves boxing champion coming up. He was a NCAA Division I wrestler. He was a big-time baseball player. A lot of MLB teams wanted to pick him up, you know, a football player, so very athletic. And, you know, he's got great boxing. He's got great wrestling. He puts a lot of pressure on you when he fights. He's going to get in your face. It's going to be a dogfight when you fight Stipe Miocic. Now, he's fighting Alistar Overeem. Alistar Overeem is the most decorated striker in the UFC heavyweight division, quite possibly in the UFC. He has just so many titles on his mental piece. Almost every organization he's fought in, you know, he's taken home some type of championship there. He was the K1 Grand Prix champion. He was the Dream heavyweight champion. He was the Strike Force uh, heavyweight champion. And not a lot of people know this about Alistar Overeem, but he's got great submissions too. He competed in the European trials of the ADCC and he won so that gets overshadowed a lot by his just incredible striking but he's got great submissions too now I'm picking Alistair over him to win this fight we're gonna have a new champion after this night and Alistair over him man he's his striking's just so great his takedown defense is just spectacular he's got good submissions I'm not taking anything away from Stipe. I'm a big fan of Stipe. I just see him at this point in his career, he is just not ready for a guy like Alistair Overeem. Alistair Overeem's got 41 wins on his record. He's been around for so long, just so decorated. And Alistair Overeem just switched camps not too long ago to Greg Jackson's. And he's just, man, since he made that switch, he's just looked spectacular. I just see Alistair Overeem right now, it's his time. He's going to win the UFC Heavyweight Championship by knockout. He's going to put that on his mental piece, and I see him defending it a few times before he loses it. Now, the co-main event of the evening, it's another heavyweight bout, and it is actually the former UFC Heavyweight Champion in Fabrice Overdoom. He's taking on Travis Brown. Now, Travis Brown stepped in on short notice and filled in for Ben Rothwell after Ben Rothwell had to pull out due to injury. And these guys actually fought before just a few years ago, and Fabrizio won that fight. He won a decision, but it wasn't really a close fight. You know, Travis Brown didn't have too much for Fabrizio, and I really see this fight going no other way than how the first fight went. Quite possibly, Fabrizio is going to get a stoppage in this fight, but, you know, he's uh, Travis Brown is stepping in on short notice, and this is a bad time that somebody wants to step in front of Fabrice Overdoom in the cage. You know, his last fight, he got violently KO'd in his backyard in front of his fr friends and family and lost his belt. And now he's playing second fiddle to the champion that he just lost his belt to. You know, he's co-main event. He probably feels like he needs to be their headline in this card. And, man, he's just going to go out there. I want to say he's going to beat up Travis Brown pretty bad. Uh, Travis Brown, I want to say he made, he made a bad choice. Uh, just a few years ago he left Greg Jackson's and he looked pretty good when he was fighting with Greg Jackson and he followed his girlfriend Ronda Rousey out to Glendale Fight Club and you know that fight camp just they do not have a great resume with turning out great fighters I mean minus the Ronda Rousey but you know I just did not like that choice with Travis Brown and I really see him just he doesn't really stand a chance in this fight to me and I think Fabricio is going to go out there. He's going to finish Travis Brown this time around, and he's going to look to get his belt back and have a rematch for that title. Now on to the marquee matchup of the night. We're finally getting the former WWE champion, a.k.a. Phil Brooks, a.k.a. CM Punk, 
his long way to debut, and he's taking on Mickey Gall. Now, we know nothing about CM Punk and his mixed martial arts career, and we barely know anything about Mickey Gall. The only thing about Mickey Gall we know is that he's 2-0, and and they brought him in to fight some other like young, green professional in some kind of little tournament thing in the UFC, and the winner of that was going to take on CM Punk in his debut. Now, Mickey Gall went out there. He looked pretty good, and he finished this guy in the first round. He won by submission, I think, in under a minute or sometime around a minute. And CM Punk, the difference with him is that he's got all the money in the world, so he could go straight to a big-time fight camp. And he went to Rufus Sport, and he's got great training partners, and that's going to be a big difference, but... It's also, you know, he's not out there. He's not gone out there and fought somebody. He's not made that walk to the octagon, got hit in the face by another professional, you know, out there that's trying to kill him, you know. I'm going to pick Mickey Gall. You know, I just haven't seen anything with CM Punk, you know. He can take the pressure. He's been out there in front of millions of people wrestling for the WWE, but like I said, He's just not going out there and got really hit by somebody. And, you know, of course he's gotten hit in sparring, but these guys ain't going to try and take his head off. Mickey Gall is going to. Mickey Gall's this young guy. He's hungry. He's getting this huge name in CM Punk, and he's going to try and take CM Punk's head off and make a name for himself. So, and another thing, CM Punk's 37 years old, and he's just now getting into this. It's just a little too late for him. I respect the guy for going out there and trying, but it's just a little bit too late in his life to try and step into the octagon and fight somebody, but it's just a dream he had, and he's going out there fulfilling it, so you got to give the guys props for that, but I'm going to pick Mickey Gall. I don't know how he's going to win, but I just see Mickey Gall beating CM Punk. Now we got a matchup between two top bantamweight contenders, and that's Uriah Faber versus Jimmy Rivera. Jimmy Rivera is coming into this fight on an 18-fight win streak, and Uriah Faber is coming in on a loss, but it was a loss against the champion in Dominic Cruz. Now, Uriah Faber, he always seems to be that guy that just will run through everybody until he gets a title fight, and he's just so close to always getting the UFC championship, but he just cannot put it together. Every time he gets a title shot, he loses somehow, but... He always works his way right back to the belt. Now, this is a great matchup. You know, Jimmy Rivera, he's a great fighter. But I'm just going to pick Uriah Faber. Uriah Faber's been around for so long, and he wants that belt so bad. I want to see Uriah Faber to go out there, win this fight. I want to see him fight TJ Dillashaw so bad, and that would just be a huge matchup for him. They've got so much beef with that alpha Team Alpha Male stuff with TJ Dillashaw leaving them and everything, but I'm going to pick Uriah Faber. I want to see him to go on to win this fight. They book him a match against TJ Dillashaw, and they can finally settle that beef. All right, next up, we got two top 10 fighters in the women's strawweight division, and that is Jessica Andrade versus Bad Mofo JoJo Joanne Calderwood. Both of these girls have great striking. I'm going to pick Joanne Calderwood to win this fight. She's just been, you know, she was a Muay Thai champion before she ever made her MMA debut. Jessica Andre, you know, she's a great fighter. She just made her drop down to strawweight where I think she fits in better. And she won her strawweight debut. This is her second fight at uh, strawweight. But I'm just a big fan of Joanne Calderwood. I'm picking Bad Mofo JoJo. All right, next up, we got another women's matchup, and it is Jessica I versus Beth Correa. I am excited for this fight and for the weigh-ins. It seems like these girls just try to dress as sexy as possible for their weigh-ins, but either way, both of these women, they are on losing streaks, and Jessica I, she's on a three-fight losing streak, but that was to a murderer's row. You know, there was Misha Tate in there, Juliana Pena, and Sarah McMahon, and Beth Correa, she's coming. She's on a two-fight losing streak, and you know that one of them was a title shot. She lost to Ronda Rousey, of course, and the other one was a split decision loss. But either way, I'm going to pick Jessica I to win this fight. I think she's a little bit more well-rounded than Beth Correa, but Jessica I, she's going to win, and she's going to finally snap this losing streak that she's been on. All right, next up we got a featherweight matchup, 
and it's Mirabek Tasimov versus Nick Lentz. Now, Mirabek Tasimov, he is on a four-fight KO winning streak. He has taken on Nick Lentz, though. I'm going to pick Nick Lentz in this fight. Nick Lentz has been around for a little bit longer. He's fought a little bit more big names. I don't think Tasimov, I don't think he's got a big name on his resume yet. Nick Lentz is a big step up for him, but I'm going to pick Nick Lentz. I think he's just going to pull this victory out. He's got a little bit more experience than Tasimov. Now we got a men's flyweight fight, and it is Uncle Creepy, Ian McCall, taking on Ray Borg. Now, Uncle Creepy, he has had a up-and-down career after, you know, he was on this big win streak, and then the UFC opened up the flyweight division, and he fought Ian McCall while well, he was in that little four-man tournament, and him and uh, Demetrius Johnson, they fought for the open flyweight championship, you know, to be the first flyweight champion. I thought that he won that fight. Judges called it a draw. After that, you know, he's got two wins with three losses, and I just think, man, I just want to see Ian McCall come back. I'm a fan of his, you know. I think he's going to go out there and beat Ray Borg. You know, Ian McCall's ranked number four in the flyweight division, you know. He needs this win. I want to see him pick up this win, get him back up there in that title picture. Now on to the men's lightweight division. We got promotional newcomer Jason Gonzalez taking on Drew Dober. Now, Drew Dober's been around for a little while. He's had a few fights in the UFC, and it's been a very up-and-down career. And Jason Gonzalez, somehow he makes 155. He is a huge guy. He's six foot two, and you know he's not very lanky. He's I don't know how he makes 155, but he's a young guy. This is his first fight in the UFC, and I predict him to take home the victory in his promotional debut. All right, and the last fight we're going to talk about is another lightweight matchup. It's Demir Hatsovic versus Yusuke Kasuya. I'm sure I just butchered both of their names. I'm sorry. Both of these guys are coming off of losses. That was both of their second fights in the UFC. Demir, he got knocked out in his last fight. And Yusuke, he lost the decision. Either way, I'm picking Demir. I think he's going to win this fight and keep his contract in the UFC. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe for future videos and leave a comment down in the comment section. I want to hear your feedback. What do you guys think about the fights? Anyways, guys, thank you so much.